Welcome to the Cash Confident Podcast. I'm Bree Sedano, your fearless host, personal finance expert, and the visionary behind the revolutionary Cash Confident community. Get ready to embark on an electrifying journey where we redefine the rules of money and empower women to harness the immense power to craft the life they truly, truly desire. This is podcast is the ultimate resource meticulously crafted for women who are ready to unleash their financial prowess and embrace a life of abundant success. We leave no stone unturned as we delve into the depths of money management, mindset mastery, and the undeniable influence of emotions on your financial decisions. Prepare to rise above the societal limitations and break free from the chains that have held you back as we equip you with the tools and knowledge to make bold, confident choices with your cash. We believe that true financial power begins with knowledge, and that is exactly what we deliver. So buckle up, my fierce and ambitious friends, as we embark on this transformative journey to becoming cash confident together. Hello, hello, Bree Sedano here today to talk to you guys about affirmations for affluence. And I think this is a super juicy topic because many, many people use affirmations. And so today what we're going to go over is kind of how affirmations work, what like what makes affirmations work better or worse, and some things that you can do to make your affirmations more effective. All right. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so the first thing that we want to understand about affirmations is that we are saying them to ourselves all day. Every single thought that you have is putting programming into your subconscious brain. And so anything that you say that has I am at the beginning of it is exact instructions to your brain. And it's it's not exactly an observation, although in a moment it may be an observation, but really what you're giving yourself is instructions. You're affirming to yourself something about your identity and your brain is going to do its very best to make sure that that statement is true because when you say I am, you're basically telling your subconscious like, hey, you pay attention. These are instructions towards our identity. And so when you say things like, oh, I'm such a hot mess, I'm a disaster, I'm bad at money, you know, and other, other, you know, not so desirable things that we say to ourselves, what we're really doing is giving ourselves instructions to become that. That's really what, that's really, really what's going on. And so, um, a lot of us will start to use affirmations as a way to start to shift, as a way to start to change. And we will start affirming to ourselves things that are vastly different than our current reality. And that's cool. All right. So a couple of things that you want to know about affirmations is that basically what you're doing is you're sending your thoughts down a synapse of your brain that you previously haven't used so often. And that's why you're affirming it. So you're sending your thoughts down that particular road in your brain on purpose and with the intent that that brain will become more or that that synapse, that little road in your brain will become more and more used. The thoughts that we think most often are like super highways, right? Like they're well paid, they're well groomed, they're well maintained because we're constantly sending thoughts down them. So let's just say, for example, you, I mean, this was me for years. I would say to myself, oh, I'm such a disaster. I'm such a hot mess, right? I used to say those kind of things. And when I when I didn't want that to be true anymore, when I didn't want to be, you know, running 10 minutes late with like coffee in my lap, you know, or coffee on my shirt and my kids, you know, tagging behind unzipped, you know, or whatever, whatever was happening with them. Uh, I started to say things differently. Like I'm really put together. Right. And so when I felt like a hot mess saying something like, Oh, I'm really put together felt like a lie, even though it was just instructions. And so it, and it's not because it was totally not true, right? Like I, you know, like I, there was a ton of stuff going on in my life that would show evidence that I really was put together. But at the time I just always felt like a hot mess, which I think may just be like the season of having little kids, right? So this is years ago. And so that shift 
started to to become important to me. I, I didn't want to feel like that. I didn't want to be that lady anymore. And so what it takes to really get an affirmation all the way, like all the way, all the way useful is like 10,000 times of repetition if you're just going to think it. So if I'm going to sit to myself and think, I am really put together. I am really put together. I am really put together. Um, you know, it's it's going to take a while. And so I want to talk to you about one of the issues with affirmations and then talk to you about how to put them you know, how to, how to make them go faster and how to put them together properly. So one of the big issues with affirmations is that a lot of times we can actually, I'm going to say slow down or hmm, I think slow down is probably the best way to put it. Slow down our shifts. And what, this is the way this happens. So when there's a ton of dissonance between what you're saying to yourself and the truth about how you feel that can sometimes really make you feel muddy, make your vibe really seem confused or wobbly. So like back to my example, when I was saying, oh, I feel like a hot, I'm a hot mess, I'm a disaster, you know, I'm always late, I'm always whatever. That that affirmation, when I was saying that, it felt true because I felt like a hot mess. I felt like I was running late. I felt, you know, I felt that. So when I was saying those affirmations, that felt true. That felt congruent. I felt aligned with myself. When I started to say, mm, I'm really put together. I am a lady who is put together. I am a lady who is put together. But I felt like a hot mess. That created the feeling, the sensation of my body being a liar and of really my brain like disregarding the way that I was feeling. And so to me, it felt like a low grade self-betrayal when I was doing these affirmations. And and at the time, I don't think it all the way sunk in that these were instructions. So I didn't know to just tell myself like, hey, we're not making observations. I am giving you instructions. You are taking these instructions too. So that way we can become different. Right. Like, I don't think I was having that part of the conversation, which is actually one thing that you can do if your affirmations for where you want to be are vastly different from where you are and you're getting a lot of that dissonance. And so well, oh, you, I'll give you a quick story. So there was a day that I was I was in scarcity. I was having you know, I don't know what was going on in my life, but I was definitely in scarcity. And my affirmations were I am the eternal flow of abundance. And I remember my body being in an icy cold puddle of scarcity while I was saying these things out loud to myself in my car. And the level of dissonance in my body, it was honestly torturous. Like I wasn't helping the situation. I was just making the difference between my mind and my body louder and louder with every repetition. And so that's where I'm going, where this isn't it, where that's not helpful. So then by the time I get back from my drive, I feel like a liar there's a certain level of just energetic exhaustion that comes from being very dissonant, right? Like people who live secret lives, there's an energetic exhaustion to the, to the, just the dissonance, all right? So that's one thing that if you're doing your affirmations and you're really having a ton of dissonance, one, one trick that you can do to yourself is just remind yourself this isn't an observation. This is an instruction. I'm giving myself instructions. And you can even say like a little silent uh, intention or prayer or however you want to put it to yourself. Just like, you know, con my conscious brain will be giving my subconscious brain instructions on my identity in these next affirmations. May my subconscious brain receive these instructions deeply and profoundly and move me forward toward these like intended words. And then when you say your affirmations, you will, the, the feeling of being a liar will be less because now you're not trying to say that I am these things right now, but these are instructions for my brain to understand and receive. And it, it shifts it ever so slightly to really remove the dissonance. Um, and so that's, that's a, that's like a, a quick little like expert tip on how to make your affirmations, uh, you know, a little bit better when you, when, when you feel like, you know, when you just feel like you're a liar, when you feel like you're lying to yourself or betraying yourself by repeating these words over and over again, which is a pretty common thing. All right. So next we're going to talk about how to make, how to make affirmations that make sense. And then we'll talk about how to speed up the effects. So 
I am statements are always going to be your most powerful statements because they are one year. It's like you're installing that instruction. You're installing that vibe. You're installing that belief structure. However, you know, like whichever way it goes for you. And it's in the present tense. So it's not I will be rich because if you if I will be rich was to become true, for example, the wealth would always be ahead of you. You would never catch it. Right. So it's like you want to be in present time with your goal or your your affirmed state. So I am wealthy is a very different affirmation than I will become wealthy. All right. So for your I am statements, you want to make sure that that's the truth of what you want and you want to put them. And when they're I am statements, they're going to be on the identity level. Right. So they're going to go down to like the core of who you believe you are. So. uh you know, present time. And you want them to be short, you know, like I am the eternal flow of abundance. I mean, that's, that's short enough. I guess that was an effective, uh, that, was an, that was an effective affirmation, but you know, sometimes people are saying affirmations that they'd have to read off of a post-it. And while that's not the worst, uh, you know, your, your synapses are going to do better with shorter, with shorter, very direct, you know, the least, the less, the least, the least amount of words that you can use to get this affirmation across to yourself is probably the better. You want it to be simple, right? You want it to be in present time. You want it to be simple. And I mean, that's, that's really the crux of it. You want it to be in positive. Oh, you also want it to be in positive terms. So you, you would want to affirm to yourself, I will be wealthy rather than I will stop being poor or I am no longer poor. Like, that's not a good affirmation. We, we wouldn't want to use that. You want to always use your words to go in the direction of where you're going. We don't want to use our words to, in the in the theme of avoidance, right? So it's like, you know, if you were affirming a, around your health, you're like, I am healthy. I am, I am youthful and healthy, right? I am the most youthful. Yeah, you know, like I'm youthful and healthy and you can play with it. Like you can send where, you know, thoughts down there that are a little more extravagant if you choose. And that is going to do better than I am pain free. You know, if you're having pain, you want to be like, I something would be better if it says I feel good in my body. My body feels good to be in is going to do a little bit better for you than focusing on the thing that you're trying to avoid. So like I am pain free or I am debt free or whatever, you know, something, you know, like that. It's, it's, it's still really putting the focus on the, the thing that you don't want. And we want to remove the focus from what you don't want and keep the focus on what you do want. So those are a couple of things just to think about. Don't overthink this. There's a, if you, if you were to Google it, you can find a lot of different instructions around affirmations, but the really big, the most important is that they're going to be positive toward the thing that you want that they're going to be in present time and that they're going to be short and direct. Those are those are really the main things. All right. So once you understand that these are instructions, a lot of the dissonance will go away. And that's that's a really important. Uh, that's a really important part to starting to come into congruence and alignment with this new belief. So as you are, you know, if you just think the affirmation, I'm going to go through there's there's a. Uh, basically five different ways that you can use an affirmation, all right? So the first thing that you can do with an affirmation is that you can just think the affirmation. So you can think, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise. I am healthy, wealthy, and wise. I am healthy, wealthy, and wise. You can think that to yourself silently. And that is one way to send thoughts down that new pathway that you're building in your brain, that you're affirming. Now, if you do that, again, like I said, it takes about 10,000 times to get that synapse really good and strong to get that belief structure really, really installed. All right. So also this, I think is an important thing to recognize. So also if you have one negative thought today, you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, lose your mind about it. You don't have to feel bad about it because it does take a while to build these synapses as when we're building them on purpose. You're like 10,000 times a breeze of Dano cheese and crackers. So what am I going to do all day? Sit around? And I'm like, yeah, but these are the, so this is the things where it's like the stuff that we say to ourselves a hundred times a day, right? Like the years that I was a hot mess and I was saying to myself, every time I had to leave the house, every time I had to do anything, I'd be like, oh, I'm such a hot mess. I mean, I would affirm that to myself unconsciously 
hundreds of times a day. So these, these, these affirmations that we say to ourselves, we want to be careful with them. But also, if you just are having a rough, a rough day or whatever, and you say something mean to yourself or you say something negative to yourself, you don't really have to worry that it's just going to immediately take root uh, in your psyche and that's going to be what you're becoming, right? Sometimes we can get a little nuts with, with our brain sciences, all right? But your brain is there for you. It works for you, right? Like it's your, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be too delicate with yourself, I guess is where I'm going. All right. So when we, we think a thought, then we can add to our affirmation by thinking a thought and saying it out loud. So if we were to say, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise out loud to ourselves, we're sending more energy down the synapse because now we're thinking the thought, we're saying it out loud, and we're hearing it back. So we're using more of our more of our body, more of our energy. So saying thinking it is one thing. Thinking it, saying it, and hearing it adds a lot of layers to of dimension to that affirmation, and that will speed up the way that that affirmation gets built. And so then we can even add a nonverbal cue. So you could say it's something like "I am healthy, wealthy, and wise," and give yourself a nonverbal cue, like a. You could, you could touch, you know, you could touch your, your forehead. If you're watching the video, I'm just touching myself right in the center of my forehead. So I could add a nonverbal. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that. I just made that up, but you could, you could say I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise while you, while you spin your hand. And now we're adding a nonverbal. We're anchoring it into the body. As we add that nonverbal, we're bringing that affirmation into the realm of the body. It's, it's not just in our, you know, it's not just in our mind in our mouth, in our ears, we're starting to add a gesture to it. And again, we're adding more energy to that affirmation because now we're we're adding the, non the nonverbal energy. We're adding our body to it. So we're starting to get more and more juice, if you will, out of the same affirmation. Um, and then the last thing that we can do, did I say five? I meant four. Um, <clears throat> In my notes, I have verbal cues and speaking cues, which are the same. So I said five, but I meant four. Um, so the last thing that we can do is we can start to really feel, feel into, create emotional, um, create emotional congruence with that affirmation. So if I start to feel healthy, wealthy, and wise, then I'm adding that you know, I'm adding that that thought component, that verbal component, that hearing component, that uh, that nonverbal component, and now I'm adding an emotional component. Now this does take a little bit longer, and this is gen you're going to have to really say that affirmation a few times to start to be able to feel it. And if you can't get there, one thing that you can do to practice this is start to look for evidence. So if I say I am healthy, wealthy, and wise, and I don't believe I'm healthy, I could start to look at every little single part of my body that is healthy. So let's just say maybe today I have a really bad cold or a chronic illness or something, but my feet feel great. You know, and I'm just like, oh, I have the healthy, I do have healthy feet. Let's just say I have no problems in my ankles. My ankles are generally healthy. I'm like, all right. And I see that I have generally healthy ankles. And let's just, let's just say that for the sake of this example, the problems are, you know, the illness is, let's just say it's bronchitis. So it's in my lungs. You know, that's just one organ, you know, the rest of my body is, is healthy. And I could really kind of start to, to be with that and feel into that. And the same thing with wealthy. You could start to say, all right, well, maybe I'm not as rich as I want to be just yet, but I do have money in the bank. I do have all my bills paid. I do have a place to live. I do have food in the fridge. I do have this. I do have this. I do have this. And then you say wise and you're like, all right, am I wise? I don't know. Maybe I do read a lot of books. I do get to go to a lot of classes. I do get to spend quite a bit of time, you know, on my practices and my devotions and whatever else. And so you can start to find evidence, however small, of those affirmations already being true. And as you put your focus on the truth that is, the truth that you're that matches the truth that you're you're wanting to become, you'll that will be really, really helpful. And so when you add more and more juice to your affirmations, basically what I that little practice where I'm telling you to or where, you know, I'm suggesting that you 
think something in your, you know, silently think it, speak it out loud, hear it, say it, we'll say it, hear it, you know, move your body to it and, and really feel it, really bring yourself into emotional resonance with that. And again, that does take some practice. So you may not get there right away and that's okay. That doesn't, there's, that is not an indication anything's wrong. Um, the more that you can do that, the more you're becoming in alignment with yourself, the more that you're becoming congruent with yourself, the more that you're, be you're bringing yourself into congruence with the things that you want, with the person that you want to become. And that, it, that becomes more and more powerful um, when you do it. So if you were just to think your affirmation, you'll be at it for a long time. May, and, and it may or may not even really take, you know, but when you start speaking it, when you start acting it, when you start hearing it, when you start feeling it, that's where it really, really becomes. Um, and one, I'll give you one extra bonus step that I don't think is always super realistic. So we're just going to separate it, right? So like you can say your affirmations and add a small nonverbal and do that, you know, while you're, while you're driving to work, while you're at a red light, but you can even, you know, buy yourself like an outfit that matches this affirmation or buy yourself like a, a anything, something, or, or if you already have something, just use something you already have. You don't necessarily have to get something new. That's, that's the symbol. That's like, you know, so let's just say I am affirming that I am wealthy and I buy myself this green. If you're not watching the video, I'm wearing like a green kind of shiny teal satiny top. And I love this top. And to me, it just feel, it feels good. It feels like richness, right? And so I can put that on and then when I wear it, I can also be kind of wrapped up in this thing that I've symbol like symbolically made to mean something. Now, if you just saw my shirt, nothing about this shirt screams, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise to anybody else. But to me, it can mean that, right? So that's like a little extra bonus step that you can take. And you're going to want to make sure that it matches. So like, let's just say your, your wealthy shirt you're going to want to spend a little extra money on, you know, you're going to want to buy something of a nice material. So that way it matches, you know, you're not going to want your, your shirt that symbolizes wealth to come out of the dollar bin, you know, at target. Um, unless, unless you were going for a different affirmation, right? Like, so when you're saying I'm, I'm healthy, you know, you could, you could wear something that to you symbolizes health, or you could even take other actions, right? Like, you know, you cook yourself a zucchini for breakfast while you're saying your affirmations, because then you're doing the thing, right? You're, you're cooking yourself the healthy breakfast. You're acting in, you know, the, the reason that we do this is to act a certain, is to act different, is to be different, is to become different. So when you're doing it, you just want to put a little like, you know, oomph on it. So you could buy yourself something to wear and you can come up with these actions that you do that match that, right? So maybe when I put my money in the bank, you know, to, to save. I'm like, oh, I'm wealthy. Wealthy people save money. I'm saving my money right now. And you just start to weave that affirmation into the rest of your existence. All right. So I hope that helps. I hope that you learned something. I hope that this was a juicy topic and that you are driving around like an absolute weirdo, just saying, you know, all of your new affirmations to yourself with your nonverbals, just singing them. Also, this is another thing about affirmations that I did not put on my list at all. But if if you could make yourself a little song about it, even better, right? Uh, I used to have a little song. I don't remember what it was. Um, maybe maybe a different day. I will sing you my little affirmation songs. But if you can put a little beat to it, a little rhythm to it, it helps with the embodiment because you're gonna, you know, you're gonna tap your toe along, right? So, anyways, I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day speedy affirmations, um, and basically you becoming all that you want to be. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Please uh, feel free to review this podcast. Um, and also please feel free to share it with a friend. We appreciate all of those things. That means the world to me. Bye. It was my pleasure and joy to talk with you today. Thank you for listening. If you found value in our conversation, I kindly ask you to share the show with a friend who deserves to unleash her financial power. Your feedback is so, so valuable to me. So please take a moment to leave a review. Together, we can amplify the message and bring more money into the hands of good women. 
for ongoing guidance and unwavering support on your financial journey, I invite you to join the Cash Confident community. Visit www.cashconfident.com slash join to become part of our powerful community of women where we uplift and inspire one another to reach new heights of financial success. Remember, you possess the power to shape your financial destiny. And with the Cash Confident Podcast and the support of our remarkable community, you are unstoppable. Embrace your financial power, create the life you desire, and let's ignite a movement of cash confident women who are transforming the world one dollar, one decision at a time.